I want to take a look at how to make C++ classes in this video. So what we're doing here is we're creating a room.h file and a room.cpp file. The idea with this is that we're taking all of the information that should be publicly known. So what is what are you allowed to do with a room class? So this is the definition that has a constructor, a constructor with a char pointer, the description return, and the ID, and then also describing what things are private variables that they're not allowed access to. And then we are separating that from the CPP file, which has how those things actually work under the hood. The idea with this is to encapsulate your information. So to make it so that you are creating a standalone class that other people aren't allowed to mess with the internals of your code, but you are allowed to access particular functionality from it. So description and ID internally, it doesn't matter for the, anyone else what it actually does. As long as you're able to set these things and get information from them, that's what you need to care about. And in fact, if we were going to create this as a standalone program, we would probably take this room.cpp file and change it into a room.o, an object file, which is completely compiled. And we would hand them the .h file and the compiled version of this, the .o file. So a few things to note about this. When I want to include this description here, the .h file, which has the class definition, notice I use quotes in the include up here. So I'm including rim.h. Also, if I want to use it over here in my main file, I also include it that way. So if I'm looking at this, uh, one other thing to note is that I use room and then two colons when I'm defining each of these different functions. That allows us to know that these are part of the room class description. It is basically the scope of these particular functions. It may be possible that later on, if you have inherited classes, you might need to put a header guard around this if it is the parent class or the grandparent class, depending. If you're getting a redefinition of the class, uh, go look up how header guards work in C++. So I wanted to take a look at something called a double pointer. So in this particular function, I'm passing in a double pointer of rooms. In a lot of ways, you can think of this as a two-dimensional array. And I'm doing this instead of a vector of room pointers, which is another way that you could take a look at this. If for some reason you weren't allowed to use vectors, you might need to use a double pointer, which in effect is a two-dimensional array. So let's look real quick at how this works. So this room pointer list I'm creating here. So this is going to be a two-dimensional array of room pointers, list zero and list one. And I'm going to be passing that into here. Now notice that if you have a pointer, it doesn't know what size it is. It's really just an address in memory. So you have to pass that in as an extra piece of information, which is why I had to include the size down here. The other way to do this is to create a vector of room pointers. And I'm passing that in by reference here. So notice the ampersand, so that the original vector, I can alter things in that. What if I want to actually like print out the descriptions and all these things? Well, one way to think about doing this is to basically print out the descriptions uh, one after the other. So what if I have a basically a, an array of room pointers? Well, one way I could do that is I could do a new list a get descriptions and try and do that. So let's see how that goes. Notice that when you have multiple CPP files or .o files, you have to include all of them when you're compiling. So I'm not going to give this one a name so it becomes a.exe, but I do have to say both file.cpp and room.cpp. You don't include .h files. So the get description isn't in there. OK, so if I just do this with git description, how does that work out? So it grabs first room, and it grabs second room, and prints them out, no problem. Cool. What if I want to do that with the vector? So I've passed in first room and second room into the vector and printed those out. 
So I'm using an iterator here, which is a pointer to each of those things. So what if I do star it get description. All right, that also works. Now, one thing you might be tempted to do is, why do we have this extra star IT? Can't we just use the arrow directly? Well, the problem with that is an iterator is already itself a pointer. So if I try and do this, it doesn't know get description because this is a room pointer. Well, it's a room double pointer, technically. It's a pointer to room pointers. And so I have to dereference this guy twice to be able to get to the description. The arrow is one, but I need a second one. That's why I need the star at the beginning. And I need the parentheses around this because if I try and do the arrow first, that will be one dereference. It'll try and grab the description, and then it'll try and dereference it again. The star has actually got lower precedence than the period and arrow. So that is why we need that. And run. <laughs> Double pointers. Don't be afraid of those. That's just a pointer to a pointer. You can think of it like an array of pointers. And then how vectors to rooms work allows you to get descriptions when you're going through the whole list. And then also how different uh, class files are used. One thing I should mention real quick before we finish up this is a default constructor. There are times when vectors require a default constructor, so it is probably worth putting that in, even if you have a different one, because it doesn't always use the constructor you expect it to when you're using other pre-built functions, maps and vectors and that sort of thing. So it's generally a good idea to have a default constructor, and if you don't, then you don't know what things are going to be initialized to. So for example, if I didn't have this default constructor, description might not have been initialized, and I might have gotten a segmentation fault as soon as I tried to mess with description because this is a char pointer. It's not a new array of characters unless I specifically set it up to be. So if you're getting segmentation faults because you don't have a default constructor, that's something you should take care of. Hopefully that gets you through a little bit of how classes work, cpp.h files and how to include them, as well as a little bit on how you walk through lists of pointers.